Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you so much for joining me for this series looking at Jupiter's transits through each house of the horoscope. It is lovely to have you with me. I especially want to welcome all the people who are viewing this who are new to astrology. I hope this video helps you learn more and understand more about how astrology operates and the effects of astrology in your life. And also welcome back to those of us who are a little bit more seasoned in our knowledge of astrology. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Hopefully, if you are more seasoned in astrology, you'll be able to help out those who leave comments in the comments section looking for answers and, quest and asking questions. So thank you for helping and supporting me in that endeavor and to help make this a beautiful community where we can communicate and uplift one another on our journey to know more about astrology. So we're going to be looking at Jupiter transiting through the houses. But first, let's look a little bit about Jupiter itself as a planet. There's so much to know about Jupiter. What a fantastic planet and it's such a joy and a thrill and a delight to be talking about Jupiter, stepping into Jupiter energy because he is known as in astrology the great benefic, bringing benefit, bringing expansion, bringing growth, bringing abundance into our lives wherever he sits in the chart, in the natal chart. But as I said, in this instance, we're looking at transits and, and the benevolence that he brings where that's going to be felt and experienced more um, according to transits. But let's start by looking at Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is a magnetizer. If you think about Jupiter out there in the actual outer space, Jupiter energy draws things in. It's got this massive magnetic field for a start, and it also it attracts objects around it into its gravitational pull. So it's it's this massive planet, and it is quite literally a magnetizer, draws things to it out there in space. And the same energy is represented by Jupiter uh, in astrology as well. So when it transits a house or a sign, and we're using whole sign astrology with this, where each sign represents a house, it will draw things to it of the nature of that sign or that house. It will magnetize those things, pull those things in and make them uh, manifest more in the life of the individual. And the life of the collective as well, I might add too. As I said, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system and it is therefore very effectual. Jupiter uh, very nearly became a second sun in the formation of our solar system millions of years ago and would have entered into therefore a binary system with our, uh, our actual sun or maybe one of them might have gobbled the other up, who knows, but they, uh, Jupiter didn't quite get there, it didn't quite have the oomph that it took. But nonetheless, Jupiter is massive and he functions very much um, in the nature of a, a benevolent sun in our chart, bringing confidence um, and bringing uh, illumination to things. And because of his mass his energy, his energetic output, as, as I said, he has this monstrous magnetosphere um, that reaches out into um, the zone of Saturn, actually. They, it crosses into Saturn's orbit. Um, and because of this influence of Jupiter that is so expansive, quite literally in the skies and figuratively in astrology as well, the effects of, Ju of Jupiter are far reaching and very, very influential. Jupiter is expansive in astrology as goes with the, the idea and the nature of um, as above, so below, and him being the biggest planet, the most expansive planet, his energy in our lives is very expansive as well. In fact, he is so big that you could fit 1,300 earth size balls <laughs> inside of Jupiter. 1,300. It's a phenomenal thought, difficult to get our head around, really. Not only that, you could actually fit every single other planet in the solar system into Jupiter all at once. Go figure, he's enormous. So he brings expansion with his transits and with his natal placement as well. He brings abundance as well. He brings enthusiasm. He brings opportunities. He brings, as I said before, confidence. He brings also a sense of morality to an area of our life wherever he's transiting. He brings a, a need for ethics to wherever he's transiting. And he brings a sense of adventure and, ooh, what could I experience now? What can this do for me? How can I utilize this? What, it, what can I learn about this? He brings that energy to the area of the chart that he's transiting as well. Jupiter rules 
being charitable, generosity, giving, and he will bring this character of benevolence into whatever area of your chart that he happens to be transiting. You will feel more benevolent, more charitable in, the, you know, and feel like giving to that area of your life in, a, in greater capacity. Jupiter is also very forward looking. And so his transit to a certain area of our house will give us more of a, a forward looking approach to the themes of that house. He allows us, he's, he's actually a planet that connects to prophecy and he allows us to gain a glimpse of the potential of the future possibilities of a house. He gives us the chance to extend and expand beyond our current limits in a certain area or realm of life that, that is connected to the house in which he's transiting. One of my favorite mantras that I use frequently is um, I expand to meet my destiny. I, this is my mantra when I practice yoga and do all sorts of other things in life and I remind myself I can expand and become big enough to um, embrace the destiny that the universe has for me, the highest vibrational good that is represented in my chart. So if you're feeling limited or blocked in a certain area, certain realm of life, just wait till Jupiter gets to that, um, that section of your chart and watch the blossoming occur. Watch, watch yourself expand beyond the, the limits you perceived that were around you. The blockages, the restrictions in a certain area can be absolutely sort of pushed out. The boundaries are expanded for you to experience more blessing, more abundance, more prosperity in a certain area. How this works is that well, Jupiter has a connection to our visioning processes, our you know our dreaming. Like Jupiter in ancient astrology rules the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about our dreams and and you know daydreams, night dreams, all that sort of thing. So Jupiter has a connection to the governance of our visioning, of our dreams, of our imagination, and our intuition. So it's our intuition and our imaginative visioning processes when we sit on the couch on a, you know, a nice spring afternoon with a cup of, you know, Earl Grey tea and we're looking out the window dreaming about what we'd like our life to look like, who we want to be, how we'd really like it to work out for us. That begins the process of expansion. Because it's in those processes of trusting our intuition and tapping into our imagination and our visioning you know, processes that we begin an, a shift of energy within us. And that's when the old hermetic principle of as within, so without starts to work for us. When we change our inner being, then we start to see external circumstances change to reflect that shift in energy within us. And Jupiter does his work on that inner level. He is also an externally manifesting planet, but he begins by working on this inner level, creating a higher vibration for us through allowing us to feel more abundance, more joy, more optimism, more joviality. The word jovial comes from the word Jupiter, actually. And it's through this inner change in our levels of optimism and uh, abundance consciousness that then we begin to see the manifestation happen in reality and we start to see our outer circumstances change and Jupiter begins that process by when he transits a house by lifting our vibrational level inner in our inner world to be able to receive on the outer world. Now Jupiter is named after the ancient Roman god, uh, king of the gods actually in mythology and there's an association with Thor in Norse mythology, there's an association with um, Zeus in Greek mythology and there's an association with Marduk in the ancient Babylonian mythology as well. So that he has links to all those energies of being the, the supreme god or governor over all or, um, you know, the, the, the one top authority, top dog, so to speak. And because of that, he actually rules in astrology lawmakers, judges, legal systems, higher levels of knowledge, um, places of, of learning that are of that, that higher level you know um, universities and colleges he also governs things like religion and belief systems long distance travels not just short little trips but the big we're talking Jupiter his big big travels overseas or to other you know countries that are far away he governs other cultural practices and other cultural beliefs he, like Jupiter represents other cultures in general and he also is a representation of higher knowledge from the divine realms. And it's this that makes him the Lord of intuition, the angel on our shoulder, giving us wisdom and guidance in our journey. The guru, as he's known in Vedic astrology, 
Jupiter is referred to as guru and there's a very good reason for that because he gives this wisdom he gives this knowledge he is the the wise you know angel on our shoulder now this is a spring series uh, that I am preparing. It's spring in Australia when I'm launching this series. If you're watching it at different times of the year, it'll be a different season obviously. But in Australia it is spring at the moment, which I thought was a perfect time to be doing a series on Jupiter and his transits because spring is about growth. Spring is about the expansion, the, the, you know, the blossoming and very much the, the abundant nature of Jupiter represented in spring. But Jupiter actually rules the colors purple and orange. And as you can see, I'm wearing a purple cardigan with my spring attire here. Um, and there's purple flowers all over my dress. Also, if you look behind me, I've decorated part of my house with um, a lot of purple and orange. There's an orange door there and a purple painting and so on and so on, because I really want to channel the energy of Jupiter in my home. I myself am a very highly Jupiterian person. And so I really want to bring that energy in. And Jupiter governs these things. Jupiter rules the crystals lapis lazuli and malachite. According to the, the research that I have done, there's some varying opinions around that. But this is malachite. I don't have any lapis lazuli on me at the moment, but I will be getting more. Lapis lazuli... Um, was often used and possibly malachite as well in ancient Egyptian jewelry and tomb decorations and so it was con it was was attributed to the the pharaohs or not attributed to the pharaohs but it had connections to this leadership element in ancient Egypt so it was only the wealthy only the um, prosperous only the pharaohs and their families that were able to enjoy um, the luxuries of uh, lapis lazuli and malachite and of course, Jupiter has these associations with abundance and with wealth and with the lawgivers and leaders. Jupiter's day is Thursday. Now, those of you who are familiar with how the days of the week got their names will know that it's it comes from the Norse Thor's day. And we've already said Jupiter has an affiliation with Thor. Jupiter, um, Jupiter's day that he rules of the week is Thursday, Thor's day. Now because of all these wonderful things that Jupiter governs, and we're going to talk about a few more of those in just a minute, but because he rules abundance, because he rules wealth, because he rules a certain type of leadership, that inspirational figure, that lawmaker, that religious leader, that spiritual leader, that divinely inspired leader, because Jupiter rules these things, Wherever Jupiter sits in your chart is where you're going to be able to channel and receive more abundance, more wealth, more um, opportunity, more good fortune, more prosperity. All these things that Jupiter rules will come into the house where your Jupiter sits in the natal chart. But that's a series for another day when we look at Jupiter through the houses in the natal chart. We're looking at transiting Jupiter in this series. So a bit more about the things that Jupiter rules. Let me read this list to you. He rules children. He rules wealth. He rules belief systems. He rules the blood. He rules the veins. He also rules the hips and the ability to move forward in life is obviously connected to our ability to utilize our hips. So Jupiter also governs our capacity and our ability to move forward in life as well. Jupiter rules everything from... Uh, of our, sort of accommodation of a very high level um, or public buildings of a very high level, universities, but things like castles, cathedrals, casinos are all ruled by Jupiter. Um, and not that casinos are of a high level, but there is the element of luck and wealth and prosperity that's sort of um, associated with casinos that gives Jupiter the rulership of casinos. But the belief systems around cathedrals and ashrams and the buildings that govern um, our belief systems or that connect with our belief systems. Jupiter rules those as well as the high level um, places where we reside, castles and, um, you know, um, estates and things like that of a, a very high nature, high caliber. He rules etiquette. He rules manners. 
In a woman's chart, Jupiter rules husbands and um, generally he rules beautiful things like joy and happiness. If we want to know where we can feel the most joy and happiness in life, look to where your Jupiter sits in your natal chart or where Jupiter's transiting. You know you'll be able to generate more joy in that area, more happiness. Jupiter rules devotion, being devoted to something or someone. At a perhaps not so pleasant level, Jupiter rules obesity. He is, after all, the largest planet in the solar system. He's big. Um, and if you have Jupiter placed in the first house, he can usually, in the natal chart, he can make you taller than average, but you've got to watch your weight in later age <laughs> because you can tend to spread out and become very Jupiter-like in the way you look, very round in the middle. In fact, Jupiter as a planet bulges in the middle due to his rotation speed and gravitational pull and all that sort of thing that affects um, the shape of Jupiter and he bulges out in the middle so when we have Jupiter in the first house we do have to be very careful of bulging out in the middle at some point in life hence I have to watch what I eat. <laughs> So Jupiter rules beautiful things as well, like benevolence, philanthropy, get my words out, and prayer. So these are glorious things that Jupiter rules. And these are only a few of the areas of life that you might notice Jupiter influencing through his transits or through your natal chart placement as well. There's, a, there's just masses of things as is the, you know, befitting to the nature of a very big planet. There's a very big list of things that Jupiter governs in our lives but there's just a few. Now Jupiter is at his most powerful in fire and water signs so when he's in the earth signs or the air signs it's not that he doesn't bring you know beneficial results he's just a little bit lackluster he doesn't have the oomph he doesn't have the you know ta-da kind of capacity that he would in water or fire signs he's just a little bit ta-da you know the energy is not quite the same not quite as full he is especially strong in Sagittarius which he rules Pisces which is the other sign that he rules in traditional astrology ancient astrology and he is especially strong where he is exalted in the sign of Cancer so if you are experiencing a transit of Jupiter to Pisces Sagittarius or Cancer at some time in life then you're going to experience uh, more more of his benevolence in a very ta-da kind of way um, because of the strength of Jupiter in these signs. Jupiter has a natural affiliation with the ninth house, the most prosperous, not prosperous, the most lucky house in astrology, the most blessed house in astrology, the ninth house, and Jupiter has a natural affiliation to that house. He also has a natural affiliation to the twelfth house, which is interestingly enough one of the malefic houses in Vedic astrology. But Jupiter has an affiliation to that because of his governance of the sign Pisces, which has all this 12th house energy. Um, so Jupiter is very comfortable when he's in the 12th house or the 9th house. But Jupiter is actually um, has his strongest directional strength and greatest effect in either the first house, particularly the first house. That's where Jupiter has his greatest directional strength or gives the, the strongest influence for good. Um, but it, the, there is also a strong influence of Jupiter when he's in the 10th house. This is where Jupiter does his best work in the first house or the 10th house. So if you're experiencing that by transit as well, you're going to experience a lot more of the blessing, especially if you happen to have Sagittarius, Pisces or Cancer as your first or 10th house and Jupiter's transiting there. Hang on to your hats, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Now, wherever Jupiter is transiting is where you can actually contribute most to society. And this is because Jupiter is charitable, Jupiter is generous, Jupiter is a philanthropist, Jupiter is a, a bene benefic, he brings benefits. So you yourself can be these energies or give these energies to the world and, and your role on the planet. So, you know, Jupiter might be transiting, for example, the fifth house so you can give your um, your benefit your charity your philanthropy to children because that is where um, the energy is of benevolence and generosity is being directed by transit also consider that in your natal placement of Jupiter as well where you can be the most generous and give um, you know in a very benevolent philanthropic way wherever Jupiter sits in your natal chart also so without further ado Let's go in now and have a look at where Jupiter is transiting and how it might affect you. So how do we go about finding Jupiter in the chart? 
Well, at the moment, Jupiter is in Capricorn as I'm recording this. He won't be there for much longer. He will be changing signs at the end of 2020. But what if you're watching this video in 2024, as I hope many people are, or any year for that matter? How do we find out where Jupiter is currently in the sky? Well, you can go to a few different websites that will tell you this. One of them is planetwatcher.com. Um, that's the one I tend to use to see where are the planets at this exact moment in time. And it will show you the glyph for Jupiter sitting in one of the 12 signs. So that will firstly tell you where Jupiter currently is transiting. The next thing that you want to find out is whereabouts uh, that particular sign is in your chart. Now, in the example I'm using, Jupiter is in the sign of Capricorn at the end of 2020. So if your rising sign happened to be the sign of Capricorn, and you'll know that because the rising sign is the sign with the uh, indicator AC in it in any astrological chart. You can find your charts online. www.astro.com is a really good website to generate your own chart from. Um, and you will find if you are Capricorn rising and it's 2020 that Jupiter will be transiting your first house. Now, let's say that you're watching this. Jupiter changes signs every year, uh, roughly every 12 months or so. And so let's say you're watching this in 2024. Um, this is 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. He's going to be somewhere around about Taurus. And so if you're looking to find Jupiter's transit of the first house, quite obviously in 2024, you would need to be a Taurus rising person and that would make Jupiter transiting the first house for you. So how do we do this again? We find out where Jupiter currently is in the sky and then we find out what uh, in whole sign astrology what uh, house that particular placement falls in for us and that tells us where Jupiter is transiting. We can then go and check out what um, video is appropriate for where Jupiter currently is. For example, in 2024, if you are Capricorn rising, obviously, Jupiter is going to be in your fifth house. One, two, three, four, five. In that sense, you'd be looking at Jupiter's transit through the fifth house. We'll get to that video a little later down the track. But today we are looking at when Jupiter is transiting, moving through your first house. Whatever sign that happens to be at the time you're watching this. I hope this is all making sense for people. It can be very confusing to try to explain. So this is the house of the body and the body's experience in this incarnation. What, it, what you're going to experience and in the physical realm and what your body might look like, what your personality might come across to people as when they first meet you. That's also seen from the first house also. So this is also the house of thrival, of how are we thriving? How are we surviving? Are we doing well or are we not doing well? We can often see that by um, indicators in the first house. It's also, like I said, how we're perceived by the world, how the, work, the impression the world gets of us. And um, as I said, our physical journey through this lifetime. These are the things ruled by the first house. And these are the things that are going to be um, impacted by Jupiter's transit here through the first house. So we're going to be feeling optimistic. Our personality, our character, how we express to the world is going to be much more optimistic, much more buoyant and have a sense of abundance that may not be there at other times. And this is going to last a whole year for Jupiter's transit through the first house. So that's great. We'll be full of hope under this influence. So this is a blessed year of life. Jupiter is the great benefic as we've already talked about. And so there's a potential here for just more um, benefit and luck coming to our the journey of our, our self in the body in this existence. We might get a promotion at work. We might get um, opportunities uh, that come our way that never have come our way before. Advantages that, that just this manifest for us that we've only ever dreamed of. All this beauty and abundance and joy can come from a Jupiter transit through the first house. 
lots of blessing. Um, our success can actually come a lot more easily under this influence too. So if you've been planning something or dreaming of starting something, this is a great energy to do it under. Jupiter in your first house can give a lot of momentum towards successful uh, endeavors that you start under Jupiter in the first house energy all year long, all year. What a great powerful influence to have Jupiter in the first house all year long to start new endeavors, to make new contacts, new relationships, to see seek promotions and to just simply enjoy more benevolence in your life. Fabulous. This is an energy where your dreams can actually start to manifest. And I'm not talking about your night dreams because sometimes we just don't want those to manifest, but I'm talking about your daydreams, the things that you've always wished for. Now under this influence of Jupiter in the first house, that can actually be a thing, you know? You might have been dreaming um, that, you know, you'd have a, a beautiful garden of your own one day, you know, just space to grow some veggies and some beautiful flowers and it's always been a dream of yours and lo and behold, Jupiter moves through the first house, boom, you get the chance to have your own garden at long last. So lots of um, chances for dreams to come true under this glorious energy. So it's a really good time if you're wanting a pay rise or you're wanting a sort of a, a change in your work environment and your daily living kind of environment. Say, say you've been working from home for a little bit and you just love it and you really want to do it all the time. Well, it's a really good time under this energy to go and approach uh, a boss or um, you know, an employer or something and see if they'd be willing to let you work from home or if you want a pay rise, go and ask for a pay rise under this energy. Um, this is when things can really pay off. We really want to take advantages of the opportunities that are uh, energetically out there for us. And you know, it might feel scary to do so sometimes, but the payoff could be just so grand under this Jupiter transit through the first house of our body and its journey through this lifetime. Now Jupiter, which rules faith and belief, is in the first house of the physical experience. So you might actually experience a greater connection to some sort of faith system, belief system that might become very real for you now. You might have a, a, a moving spiritual experience sometime this year that can really uh, uplift you and bless you. It's an energy of feeling close to God. It's like Jupiter is almost the divine representative of God, if you like. And here in the first house, he comes to you. So don't worry about going out and trying to find spiritual experiences to seek enlightenment and to seek that ah kind of state of being. It's going to come to you. Jupiter, the, the representation of God, has come to your realm of the chart, your realm of life to you. So in that sense, you don't even have to go looking for it. So any wisdom of a higher order, of a higher level can also come to you. It's like the whole year, you've got an angel on your shoulder whispering the right thing to do. What course of action to take, what decision to make, which you know turn to, to take in life. The angel, the higher wisdom is on your shoulder. Um, and also because Jupiter represents gurus, teachers of inspiration, um, sort of the inspiring figures who are above us in some way in the world. And Jupiter has come to you, the, the house of you, the, 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 the realm of the chart that represents you and your journey. You can expect that inspirational figures are going to come to you throughout this year. You know, you will find that teacher of astrology who just, you know, beats the band, who's fantastic, who just inspires you no end. You want to be just like them. Um, or you will find that, um, that mentor type person, maybe in a philosophical sense or maybe in a sort of a mentoring work sense, but somebody with a higher level of knowledge can come to you now, will find you, they will just arrive in your life. And of course that can bring a lot of blessing and a lot of forward momentum. Now because you're feeling more upbeat, more optimistic, more happy, which is great, because you're feeling this way, um, you can actually achieve more fame and notoriety. Um, it's a case of the old hermetic principle, as within, so without. If we are feeling really good about ourselves, if we're feeling really empowered, if we're feeling really abundant and prosperous, the world notices that. They're like, Hmm, that person, you know, and that can lead to all sorts of wonderful benefits coming our way. So Jupiter changes and shifts the energy within that then can see a result in the external circumstances of blessing and prosperity and abundance manifesting externally for you. But first it starts on the inside. So it's really a year for winning, for coming out on top, for succeeding and doing very, very well. 
Now, if you know your natal chart and you know where Jupiter sits and you know what kind of influence it's giving you, you'll know if you have a strong um, beneficial Jupiter in your chart or not. If you don't know, feel free to get a reading from me. One question reading, we can explore Jupiter's inf influence in your chart and what it means for you. Feel free to do that. My website, www.guidingstarastrology.com. Uh, but if you know your Jupiter and you know how it's affecting your life and if you have a strong Jupiter, then you're going to be blessed this year. If your Jupiter is empowering, look out. It's going to blow your socks off this year. This is a time when you can create impressive abundance and fortune that can come your way. Um, you know, you, you can really generate a lot more luck. Things fall into place, land in your lap. Opportunities and doors open for you everywhere. You guys are on a winner. Gosh, I can't wait till Jupiter goes through my first house. <laughs> but all of us need to remember that Jupiter can give um, some negative traits, let's call it, as well. Because there is shadow in, and light in every planet, every sign and every house. And the shadow side of Jupiter is overextension, giving too much, doing too much. And here in the house of the body... It's overindulgence that can cause health issues. And by that, I mean putting on weight. When Jupiter goes through the first house, weight can become an issue. Too much chocolate, too many dinners out, too many McDonald's hamburgers, whatever. Um, it is that, that feeling of invincibility like, well, I don't care. I've always been thin. So it doesn't matter how much I eat. Uh, look out. Jupiter goes through the first house. This feeling of over optimism I can take on anything I'm invincible and you actually expand in fact what's really interesting is that Jupiter as a planet its gravitational force actually causes it to bulge at the middle it's not spherical like perfectly round it bulges at the middle no coincidences as above so below Jupiter in the first house of the body and the physical appearance can uh, can cause you to bulge at the middle anyone with Jupiter in the first house in their natal chart be very careful as you age you can end up bulging at the middle and I will vouch for that <laughs> um as I've already alluded to, we also need to watch out for any overblown ideas about our infallibility. You know, I can take on the world. Yes, I can be a single mother of 10 children. Bring it on. I'll adopt all these kids. And yes, I can. We think we can do it all. We think we're invincible and that, um, you know, that the, the universe has our back. So I'm just going to do everything I've ever dreamed. And we can end up this is the overblown influence of Jupiter. We can end up by the end of this transit when Jupiter goes into the second house, a year after he's gone into the, your first house, we can end up feeling like, what was I thinking? This is too much. I'm going crazy. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown here by thinking I could accomplish and achieve and do all this stuff. Got to watch out for that overblown um, sense of your infallibility, overblown sense of your own importance is also something that Jupiter can bring about too in the first house. Now you will be very, very busy under this influence because Jupiter expands what you're doing in your life, your physical journey and all the things you're experiencing. So there'll be a lot more things going on in your physical journey, more, maybe more connections with friends, more uh, work, uh, uh, jobs to do at work, more uh, busyness in the home and domestic environment. All the realms of life can get a big amp up from Jupiter um, and, and expansion. So you will be very, very busy. And in fact, your circle of influence can increase because the first house represents how the world perceives us and the impression that we give off. And so uh, the the circle of influence that you have around you, like for me, I'm on YouTube and that's my circle of influence, obviously. Um, then, you know, if you're a YouTuber, your circle of influence can expand and increase under this Jupiter energy. Or if you are, um, you know, in a position at a hierarchical organization where you work, your circle of influence within that organization can increase and grow, maybe through a promotion or maybe through, you know, you get more people uh, um, under you in your team and you're a manager or something and your circle of influence increases so many ways that can play out but your circle of influence in life can really grow under Jupiter's presence in the first house this whole year if you start something new it can really fly so new endeavors new businesses new job opportunities new families new relationships boom 
great potential for expansion and growth and prosperity through any of these new ventures that begin with Jupiter in the first house. So yeah, it's a great time to start something intentionally. You might also see some new, new opportunity of benevolence from the universe land in your lap. And you know, when something starts, when Jupiter is in the first house, it's going to be very blessed, a very blessed experience and something that will grow you, expand you, explore, um, broaden your mind and uh, expand your horizons in some manner. Uh, the way you view the world, the way you experience the world will increase greatly under this influence. Because Jupiter rules uh, or has an association with both the ninth house and the 11th house, there is this connection to travel and being overseas. And so there, for some people, not everybody, but for some people, they might get the chance to travel to other cultures while Jupiter's in the first house, to go exploring overseas, to expand literally their horizons, not figuratively, well, literally and figuratively, to really expand the horizons, to see something new, to explore other ways of doing things, other belief systems, other cultural practices, other cultural foods and, and um, you know, whatever. There's a chance to really grow what you experience on the, on the planet um, under this influence as well. And there will be a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyment um, and a lot more appreciation for who you are that happens in life. And that's always very nice to be appreciated, to be um, esteemed and, um, and seen as a, as a good person you know so that can happen under this influence as well where you will be appreciated and you're just going to enjoy life so much more because firstly remember as I said you've got this internal optimism and then that flows into your outer experiences which means more fun more joy more appreciation for you thumbs up now any sort of risky endeavors can actually be supported under this energy um, Jupiter does in some schools of astrology have connections to um, speculations and luck um, he is a planet of luck and good fortune, essentially. Um, and so when we have Jupiter in the first house, we can find ourselves a bit more lucky and therefore taking a risk, taking a punt, having a crack can actually uh, pay off in our favor. Now, I'm never going to advise anyone to run out and purchase a lotto ticket or to blow their life savings on the horses or something. But I will say taking a risk maybe you know, starting your own side venture, um, I'm, I always act with caution, starting your own side venture or uh, maybe you know, buying a few stocks or uh, shares in some way, um, you know, maybe going in cahoots with somebody who has a business proposal, taking a risk, taking a bit of a stab in the dark, that sounds good to me, let's go for this, um, that can pay off under this energy of Jupiter. Use caution, use discernment, and trust the angel on your shoulder giving you advice. Listen to your gut as well. Now in Hindu astrology, Jupiter will be making aspects when he's in the first house. He'll be making aspects to the fifth house, to the ninth house. As you can see, they're all the green energies, all the earth signs. And so he will make aspects um, and he does this no matter what house he's in. He will make aspects to the same uh, modality in that regard. And in this case, we're looking at earth signs, but it depends obviously what year you're watching this video. Um, but the fifth house, the ninth house, and always in Vedic astrology, Hindu astrology, um, a planet aspects the sign opposite it. In this case, Cancer. So for Jupiter's transit through the first house, he will aspect the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. All very nice houses, all blessed houses in the horoscope. No malefics are getting aspected. So he's not expanding any malefic influences in this case. Now, when Jupiter aspects the fifth house, um, according to Hindu astrology, it's fabulous for creativity. It's fabulous for your self-expression and your creative intelligence. It's going to be enhanced. You'll be producing amazing works of art and works of fiction or performance on stage that kind of thing um, that can be really blessed through this transit. Um, you might have a lot more mental stability seen from this, um, this aspect that Jupiter is giving, a lot more enjoyment of your children, pleasure that comes from your children, uplift and optimism that comes to you from your children. Some people, not everybody, but some people can even get pregnant according to the Hindu system when Jupiter makes this kindly aspect to the fifth house. So um, that is a real gift and a real blessing um, to experience. This is the second luckiest house in the horoscope, the house of fortune. So 
Good things can come to you because of that aspect, according to the Hindu system. And in the seventh house, there is the possibility for marriage. When Jupiter is opposing, making an aspect, and it doesn't matter that it's an opposition in Hindu system, because um, the, the aspects themselves aren't weighted as positive or negative. They simply direct energy to a certain area. So the opposition um, of Jupiter to the seventh house when he's in the first house, it can bring marriage, can bring blessing to um, relationships. Important new love affairs can arise in your life. You might meet some that, you know, soulmate that you've always been looking for under this transit of Jupiter to the first house. Uh, you might find that, um, you know, perhaps new, new business relationships pop up that are super beneficial, that allow you to collaborate and create a great deal more success and benefit in your life through business. Not only that, but the ninth house aspect here is um, giving you the potential for travel. We've already talked about that being a thing. Jupiter in the first house can mean you might travel a bit or, you know, go to different countries or something. Um, but the aspect of the ninth house gives the potential for that in the Hindu system. Um, and look, as I said, uplifting um, experiences of faith and belief, which are also what the Western system considers for Jupiter in the first house. In the Hindu system, that is also a thing through the aspect of, um, uh, to the ninth house you can grow your philosophical knowledge because of the aspect to the ninth house and you can have a lot more luck through the aspect to the ninth house of Jupiter when he's transiting the first house so there you have it folks Jupiter through the first house in both the Western system and the Hindu system what a wonderful little planet what a gift it is to have the transit of Jupiter through the first house we all get to experience it every 12 years or so so you might like to be able to make plans for okay in six years time when I'm going to have this transit I'm going to start this new venture I'm going to build it up till then and then I'm going to start it or whatever you know you can really time your life to fit with Jupiter's gift of blessing and benevolence that is so powerful and so abundant when he's in the first house thanks for joining me for this video do check out the other videos that I have about Jupiter and his transits through the various houses you'll experience them all within the context of 12 years a 12-year cycle so make sure you know what you're in for and enjoy it's Jupiter